it's Anna and for today this is another tutorial wherein we will make a word scramble game with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And in this word scramble game, of course, there's gonna be some words and we're gonna pick randomly from those words and we're also gonna scramble those words and then the user or the player will then um, try to guess or answer the word with the hint that we also will provide. So yeah, um, if you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel and also give this video a like if you want to see more and also don't forget to hit that bell notification if there are new videos coming up from us. So let's get started. Okay, so I just created a new folder in a, my desktop and named it Word Scramble Game and you, um, we're gonna open it in Visual Studio Code. All right, I already have it open here in Visual Studio Code and um, once you have it open, let's create a new file and we start with index.html. Okay, we're gonna do this word scramble game with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML would be the structure of our web page. So let's just create the boilerplate, HTML5, and this would be the boilerplate for our HTML file. So let's just click that or press tab. There we go. So let's just name the title of this document as word scramble game. All right, okay. For the body, let's go to the body. This is the actual content or what the user sees in our HTML document. And first, we're going to create a div, okay? And divs in HTML are divisions or sections between your um, structure. And we do have a shortcut when creating tags, and that is by typing the tag in HTML. And then if we, I'm going to add a class to this that is named container. So I'm going to add a dot and then the name of the class, which is container. So this is the shortcut. And then I just press tab. All right, so it automatically creates that tag and including the class that it has, all right? And after that, let's create an h2 tag. And for this one, let's just say it's a word scramble, all right? And h2 means heading two, and we have different headings. And one would be the biggest and six, h6 would be the smallest out of the headings. Okay, so this will serve as like the title of our page. And next, let's add another div right here, which has the class of welcome. Okay, and press tab. All right, and inside that div, we're going to put in some um, a button, a start button, okay? And I'm going to put that inside a div class again, a div again. So div.buttons and press tab. And inside that is where we will put our actual button with a class of start game. Okay, and that button will just say start. All right, so that um, when the player wants to start a game, they will just click this button. Okay, after the welcome div, we're going to create another div right here, and this would be the content. All right, this will um, be the actual game once the player um, clicks start. It will, this will show up. Next, let's just add a, p a paragraph tag, and this would have a class of word. Okay, so this will stay empty because this we will populate this or fill this with the actual scrambled word when it, with DOM manipulation in JavaScript. We're going to put in another div right here, which has the class of details. All right. And this will contain the hint and the time left for the player. All right. So let's just put a P tag for he here for the hint. Okay. So let's add a hint class there. And let's just put a hint word here. And then we'll add on to this with a span. Okay. And this span will stay empty because this span will actually contain the hint from our JavaScript. Okay, and well, let's add another p tag right here with a class of time. And this will be for the time left. It will display the time left. And we'll also put a span right here. And a b tag, which stands for bold. So this makes our text in here bigger. And for this one, let's also put in 30 seconds. 30 would be the, um, the starting number of our um, time. And then just outside the B would be an S, which represents seconds, of course. And after that de details div, we're going to put in an input right here, wherein the player would put in their um, answer. And let's just press tab, and the type would be text. And let's also add a placeholder, which will be the words that show before the player inputs something, and it goes away once the player um, focuses on the input. So let's say enter valid word. Right, so it's instructions for the player. And then let's just add another div after that, and this will be for the buttons again. Buttons. Let's create a button which has the class of refresh word. There we go. And this will just say refresh word. OK, 
Okay. And just to add on to this, maybe you're wondering what is a class and we've been giving all these things classes um, classes are like names or identifiers we're giving to these elements right here or tags. And um, we can access those in Java. In JavaScript and also in CSS, when we're styling them, we can select them. And classes can be given to multiple elements. So um, multiple elements can have the same class and an element can have multiple classes. Okay, after this refresh button, we're going to add another one with, which has the class of check word. So those are um, this, that will be the structure of our HTML page. And I actually want to see what's, what this looks like. So um, I let's go to extensions. And if you don't have a live server, just search up live server in your extensions in VS Code. And it would be the first one that pops up once you search it. There we go. And install it. I already have it installed. And this will just show uh, a live preview of what the HTML page you're working on. So this is great when you're working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I already have that. So I just go down here where it says go live, click to run live server, and just click that. So that is the structure. Now I want to style it and make it look better. So let's go to our folder where it's scramble game and let's create another file and let's name this styles.css. All right. And before we go ahead and write our CSS code, let's just go to back to our HTML and we're going to link our styles um, to our HTML, of course. So let's go in our head and let's add a link. Okay, because we're linking our H our style sheet. So um, it, this specifies that we are um, linking a style sheet. And then the href would be the hypertext reference and in which what file we are referring to. So we're referring to the styles.css, okay, because we have it in the same folder. So we can just put that in. All right, so now it will be connected. I put them side by side so I can um, see the changes that I make in real time. So let's go to styles.css. And first, I want to select everything and remove the margin and the pod padding or the spaces. Here, as you can see, there are spaces at the edges. And I want to remove that. So let's just select everything. There we go. That is the select. Um, that's what we call selectors in CSS, wherein we select the tags or elements in our HTML document. And we open up some curly braces. And inside this will be the properties or style properties that we're trying to change for this um, thing that we're selecting. All right. So we want to remove the pad the margin first. So let's put it to zero. And we're also going to remove the padding. So let's that set that to zero as well. All right. And oh, we're also going to change the font family of our um, HTML document because it, it's looking a bit um, outdated, that font. So I want it to be Verdana. So it's a bit modern. Okay. There, as you can see now, um, we have no spaces outside and uh, the um, font family of our text has changed for everything. All right. And now I want to style the whole body and make it look um, neater. So let's select the body first. And we're going to put set its display as a flex. So let's add a padding to each side of our body. So when we're doing padding, we can just um, do the shorthand, which is zero. And this means for the top and the bottom and then 10 pixels, which means this is for the left and the right. As you can see, now we have added some padding from to the left and um, there's also some from the right, but we can't see that actually. All right. And then let's just align all the items, align items to the center. All right. And we're also going to justify the content to center. All right, now we can see our um, body is uh, centered. And I want to change the background color. So let's enter in a hex code by put putting in a hashtag and saying 5372FO. So you can set this to any color that you want, but for this one, I'll be sending it to this um, kind of um, refreshing blue. All right. Now, um, that's all I need to change for the body. And let's go to the container now. So we're selecting the um, container here. And this dot right here refers that we are looking for a class that is named container. So let's go back to our index.html. And that would be referring to this one right here, the whole container. All right. And that container, we'll just put the width of that to 400 pixels. All right. And the border radius of that would be We'll add a border radius to that so its edges are not as sharp. So that would be seven pixels. And let's actually set the background color so we can see the changes that we make here. So let's just say white. All right. And there we go. Now we have that. You can see the actual um, container here. And we set the edges to 
I have a border radius of 7 pixels, so it's not as sharp, the corners. And let's also add the margin so it's not as close to the, you know, the top and all those stuff. So let's add the margin of 10 pixels for the top and the bottom. And we're going to set the left and the right to auto. That means it will center automatically and it will compute for the, to divide the margin equally on the left and the right. So it will stay in the middle. All right. And if we actually look at that, there we go. As you can see, it's still centered like that. And now after that container, I also want to um, make this title look better. So let's select the H2 because that is an H2 um, tag. We'll add a padding to it so it's not as close to the actual box of the container. And let's add a padding of 25 pixels. And when we say padding, oh, just 15 is too much. Okay. When we say padding, it's the space between the border and the actual content. And we're adding just 15. And this is a shorthand too, which means we're adding padding to all the sides of this H2. And let's also add um, a border at the bottom because I want a line going from here to here so it, we can separate the title from the actual content. So let's add a border only at the bottom. And let's say it's just one pixel and it will be solid. So so it's a solid line and maybe just EA, EA, EA. That would be a grayish kind of, there we go, a grayish line so it's not as prominent. And that's all we need to change for the H2. Now the actual content right here below that. So let's say content, let's select the content class and we'll add a margin because it's too close to the borders. We're just going to add a margin of 25 pixels all around these con the content. There we go. And we're also going to set the visibility of this to hidden. All right. So we're going to hide this first because we don't want to start the game. And once they press start, it will, will change the visibility. Then I want to, uh, actually, let's comment this out first so we can see what we're working on. There we go. And then we'll comment that out later. And let's um, actually uh, style the word that we're going to be showing here later on. So maybe let's select the word and then let's set the font size to 33 pixels. And the text align to center. And the letter spacing to 24 pixels. Okay, so that means um, we're still not seeing something. So let's actually go to our index.html and uh, let's put in a dummy word right here, um, lorem. Okay, just lorem would be nice. There we go. So we have that, those letters right there, and we can see there is spacing between each letter, which is 24 pixels. And we also aligned it to the center and make, made it bigger. And we're going to add a margin, auto. So it's really in the middle. There we go. And let's say, let's keep it to all the letters to uppercase. So let's set the text transform to uppercase. There we go. Now it's all uppercase. And we're going to remove that lorem later on. We're just, just so we can see what we're working on. And for the details, that would be these two, the hint and the time left. We're also going to um, style that. So let's select the details class and let's add the margin of 25 pixels for the top and the bottom and just zero for the left and the right. There we go. Now we can see we have some space between the word, the details and the input. Okay. And now I want to make this input look better because it's really not great right now. So let's put, let's select the input and let's add a padding. It would be 15 pixels all around. And let's change the font size to 18 pixels and a border radius of so our edges our corners are not sh sharp let's say it's five pixels okay there we go now it looks a bit better all right so we got the input down let's go ahead and make th these buttons look better too so let's say let's select the buttons div first that's the container where we put this, these buttons and we're going to set the display as flex. Okay. Cause we're also going to, um, justify the content for this one. Um, so let's say justify content and let's say it is, it has a space in between space between, let's see what looks better. There we go. So, um, the refresh word would be here and cause it will just divide, um, the space between, um, it will make it, you know, that it has 
sufficient space in between the elements. And we're also going to put the margin on top of this so that it's not so close with the input. So let's say 20 pixels. There we go. All right. And we're going to um, also make this look better by selecting the actual buttons, the button um, tag. And we're going to say that they have no border, none. And the color would be just white first. Okay, so for the text, it would be white. And the cursor for this one, because when we hover over them, they don't change the cursor. And let's just say they are pointers, so that when we ho hover over these buttons, um, our cursor will also change. And let's add a padding to this of 10 pixels at the top and the bottom, and 20 pixels on the left and the right. And we're going to make this look bigger by um, changing the font size to 15 pixels. And... We're going to make it also cohesive of the other elements by adding a border radius. So they are all rounded rectangles. So let's say five pixels. And that's all we need for now. And we're also going to style um, these buttons better. So let's start styling the actual start game. Okay. And we're going to say it has a margin of zero. Okay. For the top and the bottom. But we're also going to put it in the middle. So let's say it has an auto on the left and the right. And then we're also going to um edit the refresh word so let's select the class for that and we're going to say its background is just a grayish background so 6 um c 7 5 7 d would be i think a great gray color right and we're also going to add something we're going to change the color when we hover over that so let's change it to background let's change the background to um, like a lighter gray that would be or a darker gray mean so 5 f 6 6 6 and d There we go. So now when we hover over that it will be like a slightly darker color and We're also gonna um, change the colors of the start and the check word to the same thing So let's select the check word first and add a comma because we're going to also apply these styles to the start game. So both the check word and the start game will have these style properties, with, which is the background to just a light blue 5372 FO. F0, I mean. There we go. Now they have like a same um, color. And we're also going to change them when we hover over these. So let's select both of them, the check word, and add a pseudo class of hover and comma because we're also going to apply that to the start game hover there we go so the background for these would be a darker blue which is 2 c 5 2 ed okay there we go now it looks better you know it um it's much better than with what we had before okay and let's actually set the visibility of this back to hidden. And let's add another file, and this will be the script.js. All right, and I'm also going to add another script right here, with it, which will contain the words. So words.js. Okay, let's first connect these two scripts in our index.html by going to, um, before we end the body, let's add a script. Okay, and we're going to add a source to that. And that would be first the script.js. And... We're also going to add another script, so let me just shift out down button so we can easily copy that down here. And this will be for the words.js script. Alright, so let's start with the words first. So let's create um, a new variable here, which will store um, an array of objects. Okay, so let's say word, words, and the array would be um, declared with, a, with square brackets. And let's add a curly brace right here because this will be an object. And let's have a word first. And then this let's just add the word labyrinth here. Okay. So and also we're gonna add a hint right here, which will be a complicated and confusing arrangement. Mm -hmm. You might find it in a puzzle or a maze. There we go. And um, we're just going to do this a couple of times for a different word. So let me just um, populate this with other words. And remember to add a comma between the words. So you can add any word that you want or add more words than this. So we'll just use these five words for the start of our word scramble game. Now we can get into our JavaScript. 
So for our JavaScript, we're going to use DOM manipulation, which is manipulating the elements within our HTML document using our JavaScript. So first of all, let's access our elements, actually. So I want to access first the word, right? It will be, let's go back to our HTML, this right here, the class word. Let me actually remove the lorem. We're not going to need that. Okay. And this will be the word text. We're going to put it in a constant variable named word text. And let's select the document and say query selector because we're selecting something. And we're, se we're selecting the element that has the class of word, right? And to make this easier, um, instead of because um, we're going to be creating multiple constant elements, um, we can just put a comma right here instead of writing const again and again. So let's say this will be for the hint text. We will also use that because we will display the hint right there. And let's say document query selector again. And we're selecting the hint, right? But we're also selecting, let's go back to our HTML. We're also just selecting the actual span right here, not the whole paragraph of hint. So let's go to our um, query selector and select the span. So this says, uh, the selector says that we are looking for the um, element with a class of hint. And within that, we're looking for its span child. So that is what it means. Let's add a comma again. And now we'll select the time text, which is will be the time. We'll display the time here. So again, a query selector would be great here. And we'll just select the time again. And we're actually selecting the B or the bold um, tag or the bold element right here, which is just the seconds. So let's say B. All right. Comma again. And for this one, we're going to get the input field now. And so we can um, read, you know, the input of the user. So document the query selector. And let's just say we're looking for the input element. All right. And now we're also going to access now the buttons, the refresh, the check, and the start button. So let's start with the start button, of course. And document dot query selector and let's select the class start game there we go next we'll select the refresh button so let's store that in a variable named refresh button and like usual document query selector and oh we'll select the refresh button class there we go fresh word class i mean and finally we need the check button too so we can add an event listener later on to that so that it listens or waits for a click to happen to run a function. Dot check word. There we go. All right. So those are all the things that we'll be um, getting from our document. And now I want to create two um, variables. So this is this does this should not be constant because we're going to change that. And this would be for the correct word. And we're also going to create another variable for the timer. Okay, now we'll start creating our functions. And for this one, we're going to be using function expressions. And this is a much safer way of creating functions it's instead of just, you know, the normal function declaration because um, it will prevent from us doing unintentional function hoisting wherein we call the function before we even um, initiate it. So let's just create a constant variable right here and let's name that start game. And in that constant variable, we're going to store in an arrow function, an anonymous arrow function. And that is denoted by this uh, um, equals and greater than sign right here, which looks like an arrow. And first, when we start the game, we want to start the timer, of course. So we're going to put in a function that is yet to be created, which is the game timer function. And we'll say it will be 30 seconds um, as a, an argument to the timer. All right. And next, we're going to create um, a random object. So this will choose a random word from our words list right here. So let um, random word and let's say word. Let's complete the word actually. <laughs> there we go. And let's say words. Okay, so because we're getting from the array, and the specific index will be getting will be randomly generated. So let's say math dot floor, and we this math dot floor just um, rounds down or to the nearest number r, the random number that we'll generate. And let's put in here math dot random, and open and close parentheses, and we'll multiply that by the length of our words array so for example we have five words right now right so that will we will multiply the randomly number generated by five okay and that will make sure that um it is within z one two five the math dot, dot random okay and next we'll put in a word array right, right here because we're going to put each letter of the randomly generated word with uh inside an array with um each letter in in, in its own value or index so let's get the random word right here. 
and we're gonna split that we're, we're gonna split each letter with just um, a blank string in between those okay now that we have each letter in the word um, in an array we're gonna actually scramble those um, letters because you know this is a word scrambler so we need to scramble those letters so we will do that with a for loop right here so inside the for loop let's initiate let's initiate an i variable and we're gonna assign the length of the word array to this variable okay so maybe if our word has five letters it will start with the length of the, oh, so it will start with five and we're gonna remove one from it because we're also keeping in mind what that this we're dealing with the index here and the index will always be one shorter than the actual length of our array okay and after that initialization of the variable i let's also set a condition that um it this for loop will run as long as i is greater than zero and after every iteration it will decrement i by one so let's just put i dash dash Okay, and inside this for loop, we're going to create a J variable. And this is the a random number two in which um, where we will scramble our letters. Okay, how we scramble our letters. Math.floor right here. And so we're, we're going to put here a math.random. Okay, there we go. And open and close parenthesis because this is a method of a JavaScript, a math method of JavaScript, which is th that's why it needs those parentheses right there. And we're going to multiply that by I plus one okay because and this makes sure that we're still within the word length and we're just adding one to it because we subtract in one from it right okay and we're gonna do like um a technique here wherein we are wherein we're gonna um swap the values of the um the i and the j in the array so that um our word will be scrambled so let me actually show you so that it will better understand it so first we're gonna um, put in the word array i right here first okay and comma the word array j okay so um we will assign now the word array j right here i mean like that and we're gonna change the word array j to the word array i so this is swapping just essentially essentially swapping the each letter in the array so that it's scrambled right because j as we remember we th this is a random number that we generated okay and that's all we need to do for the for loop and this makes sure that our word is scrambled okay and next we're gonna put a word we're gonna um get this word text right here and we're gonna display the word array that we created right so let's go ahead and say word text dot inner text okay inner text because we're just changing the text and we're gonna get the word array that we scrambled and we're gonna join that together with a blank string for each character and we're also gonna put in the hint so let's say hint text and we're also gonna change the inner text for this one to the random word that um, that we created and within that it has the hint so we'll just access the hint all right and we're also going to um change the word that we created to all lowercase so let's um actually set the correct word right here and we're gonna get the random word that we got and we're gonna select word and it's method right here which is to lowercase so this just makes sure that all the word that we got will be in lowercase and next, we're going to um, put the input field value to blank. Okay, input field, oh, input field dot, dot value. And yeah, we're just going to put that into a blank string. And we're going to set the attribute of the input field to be the max length, uh, which is... Oh, no. Okay, so that's what that's all we need to start the game. And um, just like I mentioned, we have this game timer right here. So let's actually create that before we start the game right here. Because remember, we don't have function hoisting with the function expressions. So let's say const game timer equals, and we're getting um, a parameter right here, which is the max time. So for this one, it will be 30. So let's say max time and an arrow function right there. First, we need to clear the... Um, interval that we'll be setting later on so that it makes sure we make sure that um the timer resets so let's say clear interval 
right here and we're gonna clear the timer all right and for the timer let's actually create that timer and we're gonna set an interval for that and inside this we're gonna put in a function and an arrow function and we're gonna check if the max time is more than zero it's gonna decrease the max time by one so let's decrease that by one we're gonna return the time we're gonna return the time text right here and we're gonna change the inner text of that to be the max time oops max time there we go all right but if it's not more than zero it's gonna skip this if statement and continue on which is alert we're gonna show up an alert and of course if it's not more than zero that means the time is up so we'll put in some back ticks right here back tick times up and we're using back ticks because we're going to use um, template literals right here because we want to get the correct word and display that so let's say um, this is the syntax for the template liter literals and we're going to get the correct word right correct word and we're going to set the correct word to uppercase because we had it to lowercase now we're going to put it into uppercase Okay, and let's say here, the correct word was the correct word. So maybe our word would be JavaScript is the correct word. It, show, it would show like that. And after that, we're going to start the game again. Okay, and this is actually the first um, argument for this set interval method or um, that we have. And the second would be how many um, milliseconds it will take for each um, interval of this um, timer. So, well, let's just say one second. That means that would be 1,000 1, milliseconds. Okay, now we can um, set the timer and we can also start the game. And we have one more thing to do, which is actually checking the word that the user inputs. So, let's create a check word function right here. And it's also going to be an arrow, a function expression, which has an arrow function right here. And for this one, we're going to say we're going to get the user word first, of course. So, let user word equals, okay. Let me make sure that it's in camel case. And we're going to get input field and its value. And we're going to set that to lowercase. To lowercase. All right. And let me put in some open and close parentheses right here. And after that, after we've got that user word, we're going to check if the u there is no user word first. Of course, we need, check we need to actually check if the user input anything. And if not, we're going to return an alert, which says, please enter the word to check. There we go. All right. But if it's not, the user did input something, we're now going to check if the user word is not equal to the correct word. That means they are wrong. So let's say the user word is not equals to the correct word. And if it's not, it's going to return an alert. Once again, return alert. And let's say here, let's some back text. Oops. And we're gonna get the user word where we want to display that is not the correct word. Okay. Okay. And finally, if um, the there is a user word and the user word is actually equals to the correct word, then we can finally say and we can go ahead and give an alert of back ticks yay um and we're gonna display the correct word to uppercase okay and we're gonna say um for example labyrinth is the correct word okay and then we can uh, um start the game once again there we go all right, so um, we have these three functions that we need. We get we need the timer and the start game and checking the word. Now we just need to attach these functions and actually call them by adding event listeners to our buttons. So now we're going to add some event listeners and we're going to start, of course, with the start button. Okay, and we're going to add an event listener to this one. And event listeners are, are is a method of JavaScript wherein we're just saying to JavaScript, hey, um, listen for this event or wait for this event to happen and then do something. So the event that we're waiting for is a click, of course, and that would be a click to the start button right here. And once it does, we're going to put in a function right here. So it directly goes into this function. So the second um, argument right here would be the thing it does once the event happens.
And what we want to do is actually get the const. Um, we're going to create some const uh, constant variables to um, get some elements again. And we're going to set the visibility of our content, right? Because we set the visibility to hidden a while ago, and now we're going to make it visible. So let's actually select the content, content div first. All right. And say document dot select query selector. And we're going to select the element with a class of content. And we're also going to get the welcome div, which has the start button, because now we actually want to remove that once we start the game. So let's say const welcome div. And we're going to say document dot query selector. And we're going to get the element with a class of welcome, which is this one right here. Okay, this one. So this is the div class with welcome, which is the buttons. And this is the div with a content. So we're just interchanging the visibility of these ones. And let's say content div dot style. Oops, style. And oops, visibility, we're going to set the visibility, which is a style property. And we're going to now set it to visible, which it initially was hidden. And for the welcome div, we're just going to remove it instead of hide it, because it's still going to occupy the same space if we hide it. But if we actually remove it, it's not going to consume any space anymore. And then finally, we can start the game. Okay. All right. So now we got that start button. Now we also need for the refresh button. So when the user clicks the refresh button, it's, of course, it's going to create a new word. But there's a simple way of doing this, which is just, you know, starting the game again. So we're listening for a click on the refresh button. And when we there is a click, we'll start the game again. There we go. It's that simple. And finally, this is the last one, which is our check button. And we want to actually um, check the word or run this function right here once we um, have the click event on this check button. So let's add an event listener to this one, too. And of course, we're waiting for a click. And we're going to check the word once we have we have an event of click on the check button. All right. Now let's actually check if this is working. OK, so now we have this word scramble game and let's test it out. Of course, you can make it look better and change the colors if you want and maybe add some words to, um, you know, make it more personal. And let's start the game. And as you can see, we have um, a randomly a random word right here from our words array and it's all also scrambled already and we have the hint the state of being alone that can be peaceful and enjoyable and i think this would be solitude of course because i set the words so let's actually check it there we go we have this alert that says yay solitude is the correct word okay and it starts it should start a new game and actually it's not starting one right now so let me um check back in the um in here and here actually that we don't have the open close parentheses which is wrong so let's just add those and let's go back here okay and refresh the page all right so let's start the game again and we have this right here a complicated and confusing arrangement you, you can find it in a puzzle or a maze so this would be labyrinth and let's check the word there we go yay chat labyrinth is the correct word okay and it starts a new game and if we don't enter a valid word and we check word it says please enter the word to check and if we enter a wrong word, for example, I don't know, and check the word, oops, I don't know is not a correct word. Okay, and if I actually want to restart the game, I can just say refresh word, and it gives me a new word right here, and the timer resets. So yeah, that is a word scramble game, and we're also going to wait this out just to see what happens when the, the timer is out. And um, yeah, this is the word scramble game. You can play with this, you can um, put in more words, of course, and more complicated words, or maybe easier words, and change the color scheme, make it look better. And yeah, I do just hope that we learned something today with um, creating with this word scramble. So there we go. Now the time's up. Luminous was the correct word. So yeah, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, um, you can consider subscribing to us. And you can also like this video for more to come.